Evening, guys. So it's, uh, it's go time on cutting up this Porsche. Originally, this was going to be a video of uh, the new way I'll be doing this eventually with the acetylene torch back there. But the acetylene torch I bought, not going to lie, it's uh, secondhand. And uh, I just got a different tip for it today, thinking that the uh, tip needed a bigger orifice to cut through the metal. And now I'm not sure if it's a regulator issue, possibly. Uh, I think they're sticking a little bit. But for now, I'm pretty frustrated with it. It's time for this car to go. So we're going to cut up the car the old-fashioned way. Which is definitely an easier way to go. Uh, I don't re necessarily recommend this for the faint of heart. But the good old reciprocating saw most definitely does the job. It's a little bit e easier to get certain places like here, maybe here, right down the middle, up here towards the firewall on these Porsche boxers, and uh, some other places around where the gas tank is under here, as well as uh, this section back here. A little bit tougher, but sometimes you just gotta kind of get in there at an angle and get it done. I recommend the nine inch blades for these, and it's good to uh, wear eye protection for sure, as well as Somewhere around here, I've got some ear protection too, which I'll be putting on before I start cutting. So when you're cutting up a car with a sawzall, this is more of a when, not if situation. Eventually, your blade will break off from the chuck of the sawzall. Doesn't matter which brand you have, better blades help a little bit, but the cheap ones will do it, the expensive ones will eventually do it. It's gonna happen no matter what. When this happens, it's important to just remember to twist the chuck all the way and the piece will fall out. Now, the chances are, wherever your blade gets stuck is probably in your workpiece. Here's an example. So, this is nothing to panic about. When you get a blade stuck, don't try to grab it with your hand, as it'll probably be hot. And, uh, burning your hand on hot metal sucks, for lack of a better term. The thing to use is a nice little handy set of pliers. Then you can embarrass yourself by not being able to pull it out the first time, just like me. Huh. Well, this is usually easier uh, two-handed, I'm not going to lie. It's important to get this out because, as you can see, it's right in the middle of your cut. Eventually... You're going to be able to get this thing so out. I cut to this point, uh, just so you guys could see one thing real quick. When you're cutting up this car, or any car pretty much with a Sawzall, one thing you want to do is when one section is about to separate from the rest of the chassis, like you could see this rear quarter right here, you want to lift the rest. So as it pulls back and away, you get a clean cut at the underside. You can see right here, this section is doubled up, stamped, reinforced, super hard to cut through. It's even definitely a pain if you've got a torch, you got it dialed in properly and all that. Uh, the Sawzall, it's even tougher. So if you can get a little elevation on the car where you can get a couple extra different angles so you can get a better cut, it's most definitely better right here. We've got this section of the chassis elevated. So as this section starts to drop, we get that underside of the cut that's a little bit harder to get to exposed. Uh, this is just my method. As you can tell, I'm in no way a professional, but I have done this quite a few times. Uh, so again, we're quartering this car uh, just because pretty much on a Boxster, you get it quartered up like this. Anybody can... Uh, Anybody can help you lift the sections into your truck. I don't currently have a trailer. Uh, I'm doing most of this out of a neighborhood, so uh, that's about it. You just got to make do with what you got. So for a lot of you at home, 
this uh, this conundrum is going to seem familiar. What I recommend is just quarter in the car. You can easily lift it up that way, put it in the back of your truck or on even a car with a trailer if you don't have a truck. So uh, you're just going to have to make basically a cut all the way down the middle. You can see what I already did with the torch right here. And then you're going to do one across. So once you get it quartered, it's uh, pretty easy. Again, the first part takes the longest because uh, once you got the first cut, you've already got one, two out of your four cuts you need set up. So all we've got to do now is come across here and uh, we're pretty much done up front. Got to slice through the windshield and then we're good to go. This section on a lot of cars is specifically reinforced. It's right by the firewall, it's hard to get to. So that's going to take a little bit longer. your wrist might fall off, which you probably will, unless you're just that much more of a man than me. I doubt it. Don't forget, just go out and take a break. Maybe you've got a project car you haven't fired up in a while. Go out and enjoy for a minute. You'll come back feeling refreshed and ready to finish cutting up the car. looks like a, a promise it's uh it's Gatorade with a lime and a pint glass no big deal hey whenever you're operating cutting equipment torches reciprocating saws etc it's always important to wear the proper safety gear and make sure there's no alcohol present <sighs> that's some good Gatorade
make life a little irritating while you're getting rid of your source of parts, it's important to note that you shouldn't get frustrated. And if you get frustrated, it's better to just walk away than resort to any other measures that might make work conditions unsafe. Just remember, safety first. What? What? It's not what it looks like. There you have it, the not-so-elegant and oh-so-amusing, irritating process of cutting up a car. So if you're thinking about parting out a car yourself, well, hopefully you've got a flatbed with a winch so you can just take the car whole, maybe on some furniture dollies. If you don't, you'll be in my boat. If you have any better ideas on how to do this other than the Sawzall or acetylene torch, let me know. I'm all ears. If, uh, ugh. if you want to do this yourself, and I highly recommend against it, unless you're just a, a glutton for punishment, then you can click on the show more for some extra tools to do it. I use a crappy Sawzall for this show, but uh, normally I use a nice Milwaukee unit that I can link to, and you're going to need lots of Sawzall blades. However many you think you're going to need, think you're going to need one pack, I promise you should double up. Anyways, thanks for joining me in the garage again for this not as exciting but hopefully amusing for you people who never have to do this episode. <laughs>